Welcome to Tejas Education. It's a one-shot video on the chapter Lifelines of National Economy, Class 10, Geography, CBSE Board. Let's learn. Resources, Industries, Product. Industries are located in the area where resources are easily available. These resources are then transported from their location to the factory where they are converted into the desired product, which is then again transported to the demand location or to the customer. The same is the case with the services. Most parents depend on the school bus for shuttling children to and fro from the school. Even though now schools are providing online education, we all are slowly limping back to the good old days of education throughout the globe, that is on-site school. If we must withdraw money from our account, we must travel all the way to the bank, depending on the vehicle that we own or depending on the public transport. So we can say that transport plays an important role in the development of the country. Or in other words, the pace of development of a country depends upon the production of goods and services as well as their movement over space. Therefore, efficient means of transport are prerequisite for faster prerequisite it is a condition for example if you want to become an engineer you have to clear the entrance exam if you have to become a doctor you have to clear neat exam that is a prerequisite similarly if a country has to develop they should have efficient means of transport why efficient means of transport are prerequisite for fast development Children, if it is a five mark question, you have to write an introduction, then explanation, last is the conclusion. I have discussed this pattern in the chapter Manufacturing Industries. So please do go and watch the videos based on Manufacturing Industry in my channel Tejas Education and do like, share, subscribe and comment. Now let's come back to this question. What will be the first point? We will be writing goods and services do not move from supply locale to demand locale on their own as we learned that the product has to be transported from the factory location to the customer's location. The movement of these goods and services from their supply location to demand location necessitates the need for transport and this is done by traders. There are people who are called traders. These are the traders who make products come to the consumers with the help of transport. The pace of development of a country depends upon the production of goods and services as well as their movement over space. Lastly, the conclusion. Therefore, efficient means of transport are prerequisite for fast development. The word meaning prerequisite means condition. If you want to become an engineer, you have to clear entrance exam. If you want to become a doctor, you have to clear NEET exam, right? Similarly, the prerequisite for fast development of a country is that you should have efficient means of transport. Today, the world has been converted into a large village with the help of an efficient and fast-moving transport system. Explain. An important question so we will be discussing only the point you have to write according to the mark if it is five marker introduction explanation conclusion three marker you have to just write three points okay for a long time trade and transport were restricted to a limited space our first point with the development in science and technology the area of influence of trade and transport expanded now, what will be the second point? The transport has been able to achieve this 
because of the communication system. So we can say transport, trade and communication are complementary to each other. Thus, today the world has been converted into a large village with help of efficient and fast moving transport. Okay children, now let's move on. Transport and trade are complementary to each other. Justify the statement. They are complementary in the sense, they are two different things, but when they come together, they help each other to grow. Let's attempt this question's answer. So first, how can we write? We can write that today the world has been converted into a large village with the help of efficient and fast moving transport. I have taken this line from the textbook. Then, transport has been able to achieve this with the help of equally developed communication system. So, communication is very important for transport and trade to prosper. Transport such as road, air, water has established a well-developed network connection with the rest of the world. So, these that is air, waterway, roadway, they have, what they have done, they have developed a very good network connection with the rest of the world. Thus, they help various trades and also they help in the growth of nation's economy. Today, India is well linked with the rest of the world despite its vast size, diversity and linguistic and social cultural Plurality. Explain. How will we start? So how India is linked with the rest of the world? We have to explain this in detail. So first we can write, the trade from local to international levels have added to the vitality of its economy. Means trade has boosted India's economy. Next. Transport has been able to achieve this with the help of equally developed communication system. Therefore, transport, communication and trade are complementary to each other. We know the word complementary. Two things are entirely different but help each other to grow. Railways, airways, waterways, Newspaper, radio, television, cinema and internet, they all have been contributing to its socio-economic progress in many ways. Isn't it? There are the various mediums which are contributing to the progress of our country. Lastly, it has enriched our life and added substantially to growing amenities and facilities for the comfort of life. So we are discussing important question and the points that has to be written. Very important question. Please don't skip this question. Five marks. Explain the importance of roadways as a means of transport. So the first point will be India has one of the largest road networks in the world aggregating to about 2.3 million kilometer at present. The growing importance of road transport is because of we just wrote a small introduction. Five mark. Remember introduction, explanation, conclusion. Now let's write the first point. Construction cost of roads is much lower than that of railway lines. Roads can traverse comparatively more dissected and undulating topography. Roads can negotiate higher gradients of slopes as such can traverse mountains such as Himalayas. So it's easy to create roads in the slopes of the Himalayas than the railway lines. Road transport is ex 
economical in transportation of few person and relatively smaller amount of goods over shorter distance. Right? We cannot use railway for smaller amount of goods or few people. It will bring a huge loss to the country. It also provides door-to-door -door service, thus the cost of loading and unloading is much lower in roadways than in the railways. Right? Road transport is also used as a feeder to other modes of transport such as they provide a link between railway stations, air and seaports. At the end, we'll write thus, Road transport is a very important means of transport. Study nicely, take a screenshot, learn and write and get full marks. In India, roads are classified in the following six classes according to their capacity. Very important topic. The significant role played by these roads. We are going to learn about different types of roads. First, golden quadrilateral super highways. Children, very important. The government has launched a major road development project linking Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, Mumbai and Delhi by six lane super highways. This you have to learn. Next, the north-south corridors linking Srinagar, that is Jammu Kashmir, and Kanyakumari, Tamil Nadu. East-west corridor connecting Slicher, Assam, and Porbandar, Gujarat are part of this project. Now, what are the major objectives of these superhighways? major objective are to reduce time and distance between the mega cities of India. If you are traveling from Delhi to Bangalore, these highways, what do they do? They reduce the time and the distance. You can see the golden quadrilateral. Here, this picture is from our textbook. Please do good detail, go through the legends, you can understand them easily. National highways, national highways link extreme parts of the country. They are the primary road system and are laid and maintained by Central Public Work Department that is CPWD. You should know the full form and its expansion. Several major national highways run in north, south and east, west directions. The historical Sher Shah Suri Mark is called National Highway Number no. 1 between Delhi and Amritsar. Please study this nicely. Now one more that did you know? You should not skip this children. Right? Did you know that National Highway 7 is the longest and traverses 2,369 km between Varanasi and Kanyakumari via Jabalpur, Nagpur, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Madurai. Now, Delhi and Mumbai are connected by National Highway 8, while National Highway 15 covers most of the Rajasthan. So, you should know the National Highway 7 and which area it covers and National Highway 8 and National Highway 15. Don't skip this. This is very important. State highways. Roads linking a state capital with different district headquarters are known as state highways. These roads are constructed and maintained by PWD, State Public Work Department, in state and union territories. Now, we are going to learn about district road. Within a state, there are various districts. These roads connect the district headquarters with other places of the district. 
These roads are maintained by Jilla Parish. Districts in Hindi is called Jilla. Now, there are other roads. Rural roads. Roads in village. What is their role? They connect village to the town. They connect the rural areas and villages with town and are classified under this category. These roads received special impetus under the Pradhan Mantri Gramin Sadak Yoja. So they were funded under Pradhan Mantri Gramin Sadak Yojana. Under this scheme, special provisions are made so that every village in the country is linked to a major town in the country by an all-season motorable road, a road which is accessible in all seasons. Right? That's a very good initiative by the government. Now, this is very important, children. Border roads. Border roads organization, a government of India undertaking constructs and maintained roads in the bordering area of the country. Right? Our bordering areas of the country, there the roads are maintained by this border road organization. This organization was established in 1960 for the development of the roads of strategic importance in the northern and northeastern border areas. These roads have improved accessibility in areas of difficult terrains, right? border areas like you go to northeast part and all, the just bit hilly areas will be there. So difficult right, to maintain. But these roads have improved the accessibility in areas of difficult terrain and have helped in the economic development of these areas. Okay, now roads can be classified on the basis of the type of material used for the construction. So there are two types of roads based on the material used for their construction. There are metal roads and unmetal roads. Again, children, this is very important in exam point of view. Metal roads can be made of cement, concrete or even bitumen of coal. These are all weather roads and unmetal roads go out of use in rainy season. They are not metal, water clogging will take place, isn't it? So metal roads and unmetal roads, they will ask in the exam for two marker. Road density. The length of road per 100 square meter of area is known as density of the road. Distribution of road is not uniform in the country. Density of all roads varies from only 12.14 km in Jammu Kashmir to 517.77 km in Kerala as on 31st March 2011 with a national average of 142.68 km as on 31st March 2011. Children, this is very important. Road density. You have to learn everything. Even the what I mentioned, the kilometer in Kerala, Jammu Kashmir, right? An average, national average. Please do learn. I know this video is a bit fast. No? We are moving on to next next question in a haste because it is a big chapter which has been made into one video to help you to cover all the important questions and you all should get excellent mark. God bless you all. Disadvantages of roadways. Five marker. Very important question. Keeping in view the volume of traffic and passengers, the road network is in at About half of the roads are unmetalled. So, this limits their usage during rainy season. Water clogging issues are all come. The national highway are in at grade 2. The roadways are highly congested in cities and most of the bridges, culverts are old and narrow. So if you look at the traffic in Bangalore, yeah, the roads are extremely congested. Roads are not well maintained for rainy season. So five mark, five points. Again, 
Another important question. Road acts as a feeder transport in airports and railway stations. Three marker. Explain. It acts as a link between railway, airway and waterway. They carry fewer passengers to desired location with less consumption of fuel compared to other means of transport that is airways, railways, etc. Door-to-door -door service of goods and passenger is possible through roadways. Easy, right? Railways, a very important topic. Apart from an important means of transport, Indian Railway have been a great integrating force for more than 150 years. The first train that steamed off from Mumbai to Thane in 1853, it covered a distance of 34 kilometers. The Indian Railways is the largest public sector undertaking in the country. It plays a major role in common man's life. Railways are the principal mode of transportation for freight as well as passengers in India. We can say goods train, we can say passenger train, isn't it? Railways also make it possible to conduct multifarious activities like pilgrimage, sightseeing, business, along with transportation of goods over longer distance. Railways in India bind the economic life of the country as well as accelerate, they boost the development of industry and agriculture because transport of fertilizers and many agricultural equipments all happens through railway. Good strain help us. So they play a very important role in boosting the economic of the country. What are the factors affecting the distribution pattern of the railway network in the country? The distribution pattern of the railway network in the country has been largely influenced by physiography, economic and administrative factors. Okay, The northern plains with a vast level of land and high population density and rich agricultural resources provided the most favorable condition for their growth. However, many rivers requiring construction of bridges across their wide beds pose some obstacles. So we are writing about the factors that are affecting the distribution pattern of railway network in country, in our country. Okay? In the hilly terrains of the peninsular region, railway tracks are laid through low hills, gaps or tunnels. The Himalayan mountainous regions too are unfavorable for the construction of railway line due to high relief, right? The height of the mountains, sparse population, very less people living such areas and lack of economic opportunities. So you have to learn this children. Why Northern Plains are suitable for railway network? Very important three marker, two marker question. Okay. The Northern Plains with a vast level land and high population density and rich agricultural resources provided the most favorable condition for their growth. This is the exact lines that you should write. Okay, try your best. It was difficult to lay railway tracks in few parts of the country, like the sandy plain of Rajasthan, swamp of Gujarat, swamp means water clogged areas, forested tracks of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha and Jharkhand to clear dense forests, right? It's all difficult. The contiguous stretch of Sayadri mountains, they could be crossed only through gaps and passes, that is ghats. In recent time, the development of Konkan Railway in the West Coast part. Konkan Railway, let's learn a few facts about them. The headquarters is in Navi, Mumbai. It connects Maharashtra, Goa and Karnataka. This Konkan Railway was established by Indian engineers in record time of 8 years. It takes us on a breathtaking journey through mountains, valleys, etc. As well as it helps in transporting goods. So it boosted the economy of the West Coast region. Also, it contributed to the economy of the country. 
It has also faced several problems such as sinking of track in some stretches and landslides. The railway track. Rail transport suffers from certain problems in India. Very important three marker. Okay, children, let's learn. Many passengers travel without tickets, quite common. Thefts and damages railway property has not yet stopped completely. People stop the train, pull the chain unnecessarily, and this causes heavy damage to the railway. So these three points you have to Right. Pipelines. The new topic, pipelines. Pipeline transport network is a new arrival on the transportation map of India. Explain. Five marker. Our introduction. In the past, they were used to transport water to cities and industries. Nowadays, these are used for transporting crude oil, petroleum product, natural gas from oil and natural gas field to refineries, fertilizer factories and big thermal power plant. Solids can also be transported through pipeline when converted into slurry. Slurry pipelines are specially designed. Slurry is a concentration of ore plus water. Okay, children. Initial cost of laying a pipeline is high, but subsequent running costs are minimal. The far inland location of refinery like Barauni, Mathura, Panipat and gas-based fertilizer plant could be thought only because of pipeline. Otherwise, it was difficult to establish refinery at Barauni, Mathura, Panipat. It rules out transshipment losses or delay. Transshipment means when the goods are transported from ship to truck. There can be some delay or some accidents happen, which is ruled out in pipelines. Now, children, this is an example of the latest Dhobi Durgapur gas pipeline, which was commissioned in Kolkata, which made the delivery of natural gas produced from the coal seam to Durgapur fertilizer plant in West Bengal with the help of GAIL, Gas Authority of India. So it is meeting the requirement of urea in the state of Kolkata. So what is a coal seam? Coal seam is the coal bed visible in the layers of rock. So how? How the natural gas is released? So when we mine this coal, the natural gas is released and natural gas helps in the formation of urea. That's why it was delivered to the fertilizer plant in West Bengal. See, that's why pipeline is playing an important role in helping out the fertilizer industry. So nitrogen is bound as ammonia and carbon dioxide is produced from natural gas. So together they form urea. Explain the three important networks of pipeline transportation in the country. First one, from oil field in Upper Assam to Kanpur via Guwahati, Barauni and Allahabad, it has branches from Barauni to Haldia via Rajband, Rajband to Mori Gram and Guwahati to Siliguri. Children, you each child will have his or own way to study. You can either ma make a flow chart, make a point or just write and study. But there is no other option other than studying the whole thing. Right? From Salaya and Gujarat to Jalandhar in Punjab via Viramgam, Mathura, Delhi and Sonipat, it has branches to connect Koyali, Chaksu and other places. Gas pipeline from Hazira in Gujarat connects Jagdishpur in Uttar Pradesh via Vijaypur in Madhya Pradesh. It has branches to Kota in Rajasthan, Shahjanpur, Babrila and other places in Uttar Pradesh. Explain any five features of Hazira, Vijaypur, Jagdishpur gas pipeline. Important question children. Try to study. The pipeline is about 1,700 km long. Hazira, Vijaypur, Jagdishpur cross-country gas pipeline links Mumbai high and Basin with the fertilizer power and industrial complexes in western and northern India. This pipeline has provided a push to India's gas production. The power and fertilizer industries are the key users of natural gas. 
use of compressed natural gas cng for vehicles to replace liquid fuel is gaining acceptance in the country so we have written five points waterways our next stop waterways are the cheapest means of transport they are most suitable for carrying heavy and bulky goods it is a fuel efficient and environmental friendly mode of transport india has inland navigation waterways of 14500 km in length the following waterways have been declared as a national waterways by the government first one the ganga river between allahabad and haldia 1620 km second one the brahmaputra river between sadia and dubri 891 km third the west coast canal in kerala kottapuram kollam deogmandal and champakara canal 205 km the specified stretch of godavari and krishna rivers along with kakinada puducherry stretch of canals 1078 km is the fourth one specified stretches of river brahmani along with matai river delta channel of mahanadi and brahmani river and east coast canal 588 km is the fifth try your best children these are the national waterways of india these can be asked as mcqs right there are some other inland waterways where the transportation takes place few you can remember mandavi juari kambarjua sundarban barak backwaters of kerala and apart from these india's trade with foreign countries is carried from ports and 95% of country's trade volume is moved by sea so waterway also plays an important role in the economic development of the country airways our next topic is airways air travel today is the fastest means of transport it is the most comfortable and prestigious mode of transport prestigious air tickets are quite expensive so if you have to travel in an airplane you need to be economically sound and nowadays social media is buzzing with travel experiences people share they traveled in first class business class right so it is a sign of prestige if you are traveling in airways still among few so most comfortable and prestigious means of transport it can cover very difficult terrain regions such as high mountains vast spread deserts dreary deserts dense forests and high oceanic stretches with great ease you can fly over dense forests and long stretch of ocean now next question that we are going to discuss is how air transport has helped the northeast part of the country the northeast part of the country is marked with the presence of big rivers high range mountains dense forests frequent floods and international frontiers etc in the absence of air transport it will make travel very difficult in that area okay so air travel has made access to that region quite affordable the air transport was nationalized in 1953 a national air carrier air india it provides international air services pawan hans helicopter limited provides helicopter services to oil and natural gas corporation in its offshore operations to inaccessible areas and difficult terrains like northeastern states and interior part of jammu kashmir himachal pradesh uttarakhand so himachal pradesh uttarakhand jammu kashmir these are all having high mountain ranges dense forest areas so such areas we use the service of air transport and natural gas oil corporation head offices and all we have seen in the movies or in documentaries that helicopters do the shuttle services right so air transport is very important 
service which contributes a lot for our economic growth. And to the neighboring countries of South and Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Hope it is clear. Communication. Personal communication and mass communication. Personal communication, phones, smartphones, emails, mass communication, radio, films, right? So these are the means of communication in the country. But when we talk about communication, the first thing that comes to our mind is Indian Postal Network. It is the largest in the world. Even though nowadays we are more dependent on online services, still this has great impact in our day-to-day -day life. Like common man still depends on this service. Cards and envelopes are considered first class mail and are airlifted between stations covering land and air. Then the surface mail carries it covering land and water and delivers it quickly. Right? So the Indian Postal Service introduced six channel. Rajdhani, it is a bit faster. Metro channel, it is more personalized, same. Delivering mail across towns and cities. Green channel, within the town. Business channel, bulk channel, periodical channel. So green channel is the fastest. Now we are going to talk about digital India. Now India is changing. Everything is becoming digitalized. So many educative channels, including Tejas Education. My dear students, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you. So, Digital India is an umbrella program to prepare India for a knowledge-based transformation. India has changed. It has transformed, right? India has one of the largest telecom networks in Asia. Excluding urban places, more than two-thirds of village is covered under subscriber trunk dialing STD telephone facility. Even though now broadband services are easily available, many companies like Reliance, Vodafone, Airtel, they are providing broadband service. But still, STD facility exists. People are still using it. Mass communication. They provide entertainment. They create awareness among people about various national programs and policies, which include radio, television, magazine, books, films, newspapers, right? Radio, radio jockey. They keep us entertained. They chit chat. They play our favorite music. And even they always make us aware that we have to wear masks, we have to sanitize, we have to keep social distancing, isn't it? Doordarsh, the national channel of India is one of the largest terrestrial network in the world because during that time yeah. only Doordarshan existed now satellite revolution came so many satellite channels are there right so what do they show they broadcast variety of program for entertainment educational to sports for different age groups the largest number of newspaper published in India are in Hindi followed by English and Urdu right India publishes many newspapers and periodicals annually. We have more than 100 languages. So that many regional newspapers will be published. India is the largest producer of feature film in the world. It produces short film, video feature film, video short film. And these are certified by the Central Board of Film Certification. What is the difference between international trade and local trade international trade the exchange of goods among people states and countries is referred to as trade right what is trade we are exchanging goods among our own people or between two states or between india or some other country right the trade between two countries is called international trade. It may take place through sea, air or land routes. Right? We can export goods through sea, through ship or through aeroplanes. Right? Or through land routes. Now, what is a local trade? Local itself, we know that within the area where we live like it can be a town it can be a village local trade is carried in cities town village state level trade is carried between two or more state so it is within the country 
Okay, so that is the difference between international trade and local trade. Now, advancement of international trade of a country is an index to its economic prosperity. How will we know that the country is prospering in terms of economy? Like we say, rich country, developed country, developing country. Rich country means they have achieved economic prosperity, right? Their international trade is flourishing. It is therefore considered economic barometer for a country. What is considered as the economic barometer of a country? The international trade advancement. Okay, children? So we learned what is international trade, we learned what is local trade, we learned about the advancement of international trade of a country as well as what is called the barometer, economic barometer for a country. Hope it is clear. Why no country can survive without international trade? Export and import are the components of trade. The balance of trade of a country is the difference between its export and import. So I am discussing the question and I am giving you the points. So please see to that you learn this and write for your exam and score excellent marks. The balance of a trade of a country is the difference between its export and import. Right? Whatever balance we get it is the difference between how much goods you are exporting to other countries and how much you are importing from other countries exporting you are sending out importing you are getting it from other countries the stuff that is lacking in our country we will import if you have excess we will export right when the value of export exceeds the value of import it is called a favorable balance of trade. So what is a favorable balance of trade? And the value of export, the things that we are sending out, the, its value exceeds the value of imports. That is, the amount of goods that we are exporting is more than the amount of goods we are importing. Obviously, the value of export exceeds and it's called favorable balance of trade. On the contrary, if the value of imports exceeds the value of export, it is termed as unfavorable balance of trade. Please learn this nicely. That means if the import value exceeds and the export, the goods that we are sending out, their value is less than the goods value that we are importing, then it is called unfavorable balance of trade. So, we can conclude no country can survive without international trade. If a country has to prosper, the economy of a country has to grow means it depends on international trade. What are the commodities imported to India? The commodities imported to India include petroleum and petroleum products, which account to 28.6%. Pearls and precious stones and chemicals, coal, coke, briquettes, machinery in 2010-2011. What are the bulk import goods? This group includes fertilizers, cereals, edible oil. Newsprint, that is paperboard manufacture and newsprint, 40.3% in 2010-2011. International trade has undergone a sea change in the last 15 years. Explain. Exchange of commodities and goods have superseded by the exchange of information and knowledge. India has emerged as a software giant at the international level. It is earning large foreign exchange through export of informational technology. Children, usually it is asked for 
three marks. Please do write all these three points. Tourism Asset Trade Tourism in India has grown substantially over the last three decades. Support the statement or the question can be explain how the tourism industry in India has grown substantially over the last three decades. Tourism is growing at a fast pace in India. Foreign tourist arrival in the country witnessed an increase of 11.8% during the year 2010 as against the year 2009. 5.78 million foreign tourists visited India in 2010. It also helps in the development of international understanding about our culture and heritage. Tourism also promotes national integration, provides support to local handicrafts and cultural pursuit. Foreign tourists visit India for heritage tourism, ecotourism, adventure tourism, cultural tourism, medical tourism and business tourism. There is a vast potential for development of tourism in all parts of the country. Dense and efficient network of transport is a prerequisite for trade. Examine the statement. What will be the first point? Transport is a lifeline for all the trade as it helps them to grow and prosper. Transport helps in the production and transfer of goods, resources and services. The next will be it helps to carry people to various destinations for business, tourism, pilgrimage purpose as well as adventure activities. It helps in carrying goods all over the country. Waterway is the cheapest means of a transport playing an important role in the areas which lack road transport and also for international trade. Last but not least, you should write about air transport which provides the fastest, comfortable and prestigious form of transport. So, dense and efficient network of transport is a prerequisite for trade. Thanks for watching children. All the best for the upcoming board exam.